Welcome to Touch Technology Review. Today I'm going to be taking you through the process of creating a automated slideshow using Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2016 edition. Now there are a number of different ways of creating slideshows with Premiere, but the method I'm about to show you today, in my opinion, is the most simple and efficient way of creating slideshows. Now, all you're going to need to complete this tutorial is a folder with a bunch of photos or videos or both, and you'll be creating your own slideshow in no time. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and create our first slideshow. Step one, open Premiere, create a new project. I'm gonna call this one slideshow. Select file, new, and then sequence and select your appropriate sequence settings. I'm going to be using the HDV project, creating a 1080p 25 frame per second video, which will be ideal for screening on large high definition television screens. Step two is to import the photos into the project. To do so, select the file menu, go down to the import option, or you can use a keyboard shortcut, which is Command and I. Navigate to the folder which contains your photos and videos and select that folder and then select the import option. Once you've done this, you'll see the photos folder appear in the project window. Click on the arrow to the left and you'll see all the photos and videos appear inside your folder. So before we go ahead and place these photos onto our timeline, we're going to the next step, which is step three, and that is to set the default transition for the project. To do this, open the effects tab, which sits just below the project area, and then go to video transitions and select your preferred transition. For this example, I'm going to use the cross zoom. So I'm going to expand the zoom folder and I'll right click on cross zoom and then set selected as default transition. Step four is to go and select all of the photos that you wish to apply to your timeline, photos and videos if you have any, and then go to the little icon that appears just next to the title of your uh, project. So my project is called Slideshow and right next to it, you'll see a tiny little icon there with three lines. If you click on that, a sub menu appears and you select Automate to Sequence. Then a pop-up window will appear. And if you like to keep things simple, you can leave everything as is, just ensuring that in your transitions area, that it does have a tick next to the area that says apply default video transition. And then you'll notice all of the photos that you had selected from within your photos folder will now be spread across the timeline and you'll see in between each photo, your default transition has already been applied for you. So I'll just do a quick preview to make sure that's happening. And yes, certainly is we can see that my slideshow is starting to take shape. Step five is to reset your photo sizes to suit your sequence parameters. Now, unless you had already resized your photos for your sequence prior to importing them, you're probably going to find that they don't fit in your sequence window. So to take care of this, I'm gonna show you a very easy method to change all of the photo sizes at once. To do so, select all of the photos on your timeline at once, and then right click on any one of them and select the drop down option that appears, scale to frame size. Now this will scale down all of your photos so that the height of each photo fits exactly inside your sequence. So now if I preview my slideshow, you'll see they're not zoomed in, instead, they're all appearing correctly as you would expect inside the sequence. And there you have it. That is the very basics of creating an automated slideshow in Adobe Premiere Pro CC. 
Now, some of you may want to create some variation in the transitions, and if you'd like to do so, you can simply replace any transition on the timeline with an alternate transition. So you can just go ahead, move over to the Effects tab, find your transition, and drag it in to replace the existing default transition. And that'll serve to create some further variety in your slideshow. Now, a slideshow would not be a slideshow without some music to accompany it and give it some rhythm. So you're probably gonna to wanna to import a music track and lay it down. Now, this is a very simple procedure. All you need to do is go to the file menu and select import, or once again, use command I and navigate to the location of your desired music track. I'm gonna insert a track that I created with a, an app called 4Beats, which is a music creation app. Select Import, and you'll see that track now appears in your project window. And all you need to do to get it to play in your slideshow is to drag it down into the audio section of your sequence timeline. Now, when we preview the slideshow, you'll hear the audio play. Okay, so now that you have your slideshow ready to go, fit for your purpose, containing your slides and music, it's time to export your project. So this is the final step number seven, creating a movie file out of your slideshow. To do so, simply go to the file menu on the top left-hand corner of the screen and select the export drop-down option. And then in the further drop-down, select media. Now, if you have a look to the right, your preset, your sequence should be set to the correct specification. In my case, it's a 1080, 25 frame per second HD movie. But if by chance it doesn't look quite right, you can select the preset drop down and change it to suit your requirement or leave it as is. Once you've done this, simply hit the export button in the lower right hand corner of the pop-up media output window. And depending on how long your slideshow is, it could take anywhere from five seconds to a couple of minutes to export. And that's it. You've now got a slideshow presentation of your photos or video or both to demonstrate to your friends, family or clients. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video tutorial useful. If you did, go ahead and hit us up with a like. It doesn't cost you a thing, but it goes a long way into ensuring the ongoing success of the channel. Also, for those of you who aren't aware, I also do a lot of product and app reviews on this channel. And if you'd like to be notified of these videos once they're released, go ahead and hit the subscribe button below and you'll be notified as soon as these videos are available. Once again, thanks for your time. I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.